Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Car Talk. Podcasting and streaming worldwide. It's the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Just ahead, Nick Miles, noted auto journalist, talks about Operation Frodo. A feel-good Christmas story about cars and dogs. All right. Conrad's going to have the in-wheel time car clinic, and we'll have this week's auto news. Howdy, along with Mike out of This World Mars. Christmas King Conrad DeLong. Oh, boy. <laughs> we need more Jeff right. Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us on this Christmas weekend. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us. And if you're not listening to our live show on Saturday from 8 to 11 a.m., we invite you to do that. If you're listening on a podcast, thanks for doing that. We appreciate it. Uh, we have made some great strides in podcasting for the last year, and numbers came in, and we were all go- going, what? What? Really? <laughs> what? Weren't you, Mars? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes. 75 countries worldwide. Better yeah. start paying attention. Banned in Russia. <laughs> Banned in Russia. Banned in Russia. Russia. Yeah. Well, Broke my heart. Uh, yeah, exactly. Sorry for them. Yeah. It, yeah. They need some... Communists. <laughs> <laughs> Who do they think they but, are? But they have communists. Yeah. Keep sending your vodka, though. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More vodka. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> no, drink I get vodka from Tito's. That, that handle we went through last night. Did you go through the whole thing? Yeah, that was from Austin. That was <laughs> Tito's from he Austin. He had a death grip on it. <laughs> yeah, give me that. Yeah, we went through the whole thing last night. All right. Nick Miles is with Operation Frodo. Frodo. Um, and let me bring in Nick. Nick, good morning to you. Good morning, team. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's exactly what it is. So instead of me messing this up, I'm going to let you explain in a simple, understandable way what Operation Frodo is. Oh, all the weights on my shoulders. I get how you work. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> I'm going to shovel it off on you. But it, it, it's a dog and car kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, just before the pandemic, uh, with my partner, Mike Cordell, we formed a charity called Animal Rescue Rigs because, you know, we do cars, right? We do cars real well. And there are people in the world that need cars to do their jobs. And one of those uh, organizations is the animal rescue organizations around the country, all the way from Florida up to Seattle. They need to transport animals. And so we thought, let's use our connections in the car industry and make some rescue vehicles. And instead of them using the money that they raise to rescue animals, we would find the money and then donate the vehicles so all the money they raised ended up helping rescue animals so they weren't spending the money on the vehicles and our first vehicle we found a need in the mid in the midwest in omaha nebraska um, they desperately needed a vehicle and so we we had a vehicle we'd made uh, it was a 2018 nissan titan donated to us by the nissan car company we decked it out we'd line x the exterior we put a boat on the top we'd uh, done a whole bunch of stuff to it and because it was so big and so expensive to ship, uh, I decided to drive it across the country because there was a dog there called Frodo that I wanted. And uh, uh, suddenly, auto journalists found out about this. And before I knew it, I had a team of people who wanted to drive this truck out. And so we drove it out uh, 1,650 miles to Omaha, Nebraska, dropped the vehicle off. Um, Jim Morrison, the head of Jeep, donated a Jeep uh, Wagoneer, um, Grand Wagoneer L for us to bring dogs back. It started with just Frodo. We ended up bringing four dogs in total back. That was all in 2022. But the trip back was pretty uh, treacherous, guys. And Unfortunately, people lost their lives on that route. It was minus seven zero, minus seven zero in Wyoming. Um, it took us about three extra days to make it back, and uh, it made national news. And so this year, everybody was saying to us, "Are you going to do it again? Are you going to do it again?" And a lot of people ask, "Why Omaha, Nebraska, going to the West Coast?" Well. There is a glut of beagles in Omaha. Uh, At the end of the hunting season, hunters just dump them in the woods. There's all the testing facilities that use uh, beagles for testing. And they're always closing down puppy mills. And so there's a huge glut of beagles there. And there wasn't any on the West Coast. So we did it again this year. And this year, it started with uh, just eight dogs. It suddenly got to 10. And then the night before, uh, it got to 12. 
And so there was four vehicles uh, with about 20 journalists and 50 total volunteers. And we drove these vehicles all the way across the country. We ended up doing 1,995 miles. Jeez. Uh, 12, 12 dogs ended up in their forever homes. And uh, there's a lot of tears, a lot of journalists and donations from Ford and Infiniti and Subaru and Nissan and Hyundai and the list goes on and on. Drive Shop, uh, all these guys. Uh, Toyota sent their new uh, Tacoma rubber trucks for all the dogs to chew toys for them to play with. <laughs> uh, so there was, you know, buckets of love, buckets of fun and a lot, a lot of, a lot of fast food and a lot of empty cans of soda. But we finally made it and it was uh, 34 hours of driving. Wow. wow, what a trip. What what, a, what an idea and what a great thing. You know, uh, we have the studio dog here, uh, Susie, and uh, Susie came with her name. She is a rescue dog. She is now 11 years old, and um, wow. she's uh, very important to me, but uh, I'm a big rescue kind of guy, and uh, Susie is a purebred beagle. I found that mm-hmm. out after a little DNA <laughs> testing, and... Um, so you can imagine she likes to sleep a lot, and uh, and she's my girlfriend. And uh, I, Aww. yeah, uh, she's getting old, all white face now, and she's got a little limp. We think she's got some serious arthritis going on, but uh, you know, uh, she's been my partner for eleven years, and um, she's in the studio with us today. Yeah, she's here I, right now. I could hear some tinkling going yeah, on in your studio <laughs> yeah. there, and apparently yeah. you've got one or two in there with you. I actually have six. Um, Six. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you I, got four. I, uh, I'm a multiple failed foster uh, parent, so I go to foster these dogs, and they stay forever. So we have uh, two labs and a German Shepherd as family dogs, and then three beagles as rescues. Um, and these guys, um, you'll you'll probably understand this. I like to call beagles Tasmanian devils because in the daytime they're absolutely crazy they race everywhere they you know if, you, if you're missing a beagle just look at a trash can and you'll see a little white tail poking out yep. um, and they're just a lot of fun and at nighttime they become teddy bears they just curl up with you they want to go to sleep uh, i always have uh, plenty of people trying to climb in the bed with me uh, to me they are the absolute <laughs> perfect pet the only thing with beagles that I wish would be different is that they that you could let them off leash. But boy, those guys get a smell and they're gone. They get a sniff of something and they're gone as soon as they smell anything. Yep. It so, sounds like the whole is. group of them. Yeah, like absolutely. Yeah, exactly. There's always one leader of the band and they, that starts it and then they all chime in. And there's a lot of howls, and, and but there's so much fun. And they're such loving dogs and uh, I don't know what I'd do without mine. Um, uh, I have a, a weakness for beagles and I don't know, I've had one for a long long time this uh, Susie will be the third and we kept them until they couldn't walk anymore so yep. obviously yep. you know you, that that's how wonderful and sweet they are mm-hmm. but I will tell you this <clears throat> when I have people come over they're going why why is your garbage can on top of the pantry <laughs> <laughs> and I said well there's a story to that <laughs> we had a can one of those silver trash cans that had the you know foot press and, and you opens the lid uh that yeah. that tumped that over got in there several times and we got we got to do something else so we pulled the liner out and put it up on top of the pantry cabinet and uh, that's where it, it, it still stays to this day yep but yeah the, uh, uh, the funny thing the funny thing about our story is the reason um i wanted frodo really badly when i when i saw him um between my parents and i we already had four hobbits. We had Pippin, Meriadoc, Samwise, and Bilbo. And uh, when you see a dog called Frodo, who looks exactly like a dog that you lost a couple years before, you go, it's got to be. It's, it's fate. It has to be something you have to do. And so that was originally uh, why we decided we had to go get this dog. And, and you have a thing for Lord of the Rings. Well, you know, I'm a little bit of a geek, but aren't we all? We don't like to admit it, whether it's cars or uh, movies or whatever. We all have geekness in us. So um, where where are you located? So I actually live on Delta Airlines. Now, that's just my, uh, my joke for everyone because I travel to work uh, doing uh, TV around the country. But I live in Portland, Oregon. And every time I used to go to the local rescues, there's never any beagles. 
And I don't know if you remember that big uh, puppy mill that they closed down on the west, uh, on the Midwest about two years ago. And I think there was 800 beagles that got dispersed around the country. Every time I tried to see if I could help and adopt one, they were always gone. Um, so there is no real beagle, apart from breeders, there's no real rescue beagles on the West Coast. Seattle, Portland, uh, Sacramento, uh, San Francisco, L.A., San Diego, up and down the West Coast, there's just a shortage. So why not move the dogs where people want to adopt them? Absolutely. And what I find interesting is that, boy, the manufacturers jumped on board of that all over that. Yeah. 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 Are you, are, you hoping, are you hoping to expand that? I mean, you know, we might be able to help in that regard uh, down here in Texas. I'm kind of volunteering you, Mars. <laughs> I know, you're looking at me while you're doing the volunteering down here. <laughs> I am, but uh, that kind of speaks volumes to us down here. Um, right. And, and uh, yeah, we wouldn't have a problem doing that, I don't think. Yeah, you, you know, we're talking about next year is finding out um, what what the least the, the last thing that we want to do is move dogs to where there's already too many of this sort of kind of dog. Sure, uh, people are very particular, and and you know they say, well, why can't we adopt from the local shelters? Well, you know, everyone has different circumstances. Every single one of you guys would probably have a different breed of dog mm-hmm. because that's what suits you. Whether you have land or whether you have a small apartment in the city, whatever you have. You have to have the right dog for you. Otherwise, guess what? It ends up back in the shelter. And so what we're doing is taking dogs to places where there isn't any. Oh, there we go. Uh, taking <laughs> dogs uh, to places where there isn't the right kind of dog for the right kind of people. And, and beagles are a favored pet in the Northwest. It's just that they, they get lapped up from the shelters real quick. Um, and in, if you need and there's a, there's a need for a local rescue um, anywhere in Texas that is looking for beagles, uh, we'd be more than happy to ship them out of the Midwest. Um, there are so many. They're getting 230 requests every month from this little rescue that works in five states in the heartland states to uh, rehouse dogs. And they just can't cope because they don't have a physical shelter. They put them up in their homes. So that means people have five, six dogs in their homes. So we're trying to move them out. Um, and at the end of the year, it's real tough, guys, because what happens is in Missouri, it's completely legal just to dump your dogs in a field at the end of oh, the wow. hunting season. Oh, wow. So there's all these dogs that are running around, uh, get pregnant because they're not spayed or neutered. And then you end up with another five or six dogs there. So uh, the, the situation is out of control. And if, if you're a Missouri resident, I would just say, please, please email your governor and say, let make this stop because right now uh, 49 states are taking the brunt of what missouri is doing and just having these dogs huh. dumped in the woods kind of like having an open border in texas oh i'm sorry did i say <laughs> that I, I didn't i didn't it just kind of slipped right, right. out but i, I right. will say this that we do have a beagle rescue group here in houston but i will also say that there are times that they are short on beagles um right. it, it's a, it's an interesting breed because everybody seems to love those long-eared dogs yeah. And uh, you, what what can I say? I I can totally uh, empathize. I understand it all. Yeah, I I think a lot of people get them and they think, oh, it's such a cute teddy bear type dog, and they come home and their couch is in pieces, or the carpet's been pulled up, or the trash can <laughs> spread around the floor, yep. and they just can't deal with it. And uh, they're hounds. They 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 love being in packs. They love to hunt. They love to uh, to sort of root into little holes. I have a uh, Galadriel. Who is named after the princess in Lord of the Rings? Uh, she is the other dog that I got from the, that same trip last year. Uh, we have rats under our big shed in the back, and she will sit looking at a hole for four or five hours to try and see if something pokes its head out. So they are absolute hunting dogs, and you know, you just have to know that when you're getting one, you have to understand what you're getting. These dogs are driven by small furry things, and they love to chase them. Yeah, well, how fun, don't we all? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there, there is that. So, what can what can we do here at the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show uh, to uh, kind of get involved here? 
Well, listen, guys, listen. Take on Texas. Uh, challenge people in Texas to go to animalrescuerigs.com and donate money because what we're trying to do is build another rescue vehicle so we can donate it to a rescue that is in desperate need of shifting dogs around. You know, one of the things that a lot of people don't think about, and I have a truck that may be coming up for a donation, especially when there's tornadoes or hurricanes or bad weather, um, a lot of these places need a, a big off-road truck that can tow to, to put on a horse trailer because horses desperately need moving out of areas. They get injured, they're in fields, they have to go into protected areas. Um, during hurricanes, we had so many calls from Texas to help us with horse towing vehicles. Uh, so we're trying to build as many of these vehicles as we can to, to let these rescues use them in cases of emergencies. Plus, you know, sprinter vans, dodge vans, anything that we can get our hands on, uh, we're going to convert into uh, hauling uh, for dogs, for, for any pets that get left out in the wild from fires, from, from floods, whatever it might be. You guys have had your fair share of disasters in Texas, let's get them the equipment they need so the money that they're raising to rescue animals isn't going on buying vehicles. We'll do that for them. Very interesting. Well, um, how can we... Do you, I mean, have a website? Yes. AnimalRescueRigs.com is the website. AnimalRescueRigs.com and Riggs is R-I-G-S. And it has the whole story up there. It has the story of uh, all the animals that need help, it has the story of the rescue rig that we built. You can go see videos. You can go see why we need to exist. Because uh, when I give money to a rescue, I want that money to go to helping an animal, not to buying a vehicle. There you go. Well, Nick, what a great thing you got going on there. And it's such a pleasure to get in touch with you and learn all about Operation Frodo. And, and we, we hope that you'll stay in touch with us and keep us updated. And we hope that some of the In Wheel Time listeners could... Uh, feel that and, and and make those donations absolutely make yourself known if you uh if you're a, a rescue or you need a vehicle or that you have some way of helping us create a vehicle and it doesn't have to be new you know we'll take anything as long as it, it has uh, some life in it and uh, make use of it at a rescue even minivans which we're finding a, a what the preferred transport is they they uh, transport up to 17 dogs in crates in these minivans wow. um, and sometimes they're driving you know four or five days to get them out of the south and the southwest up into into states that will take these dogs okay well we're going to do our best to help you out nick it's great to talk to you thank you merry christmas to you and your family and all the dogs and all the good stuff that you do for the dog rescue we really appreciate it and uh again stay in touch with us and let us know how things go and what we can do to help you we appreciate the in wheel time team thank you for making time for our little furry four-legged friends well we we're <laughs> we're, 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 we're very thankful Perfect. all right take care of yourself and we'll talk again soon Nick thank miles you. with operation frodo all right time now for conrad's car clinic what is in the clinic well today? this is the final conrad. version of the shelby conversation oh yeah you know we started out originally talking about the muscle car uh people and shelby being one of them mr norm being one of them and then shelby doing the ac uh ac cobra ac cobra and then his history with Ford and the Mustangs and such. And then he, uh, when Lee Iacocca went to Chrysler, Shelby started building Chrysler products we talked about last year. Well, at the end of um, the production run, uh, Shelby built one called the Shelby Series 1. And it was the only truly ground-up Shelby car that was ever made. Um, you know, the AC Cobra started as an AC, and then they put big motors in them and stuff. Well, the Series 1 was, uh, they had planned originally to build uh, 500 cars. They only built 249, and it came from a relationship between Carroll Shelby and John Rock, who at the time was the head of Oldsmobile division. John Rock had come to Oldsmobile from GMC Truck, and he was building the Cyclone and Typhoon over there at GMC Truck. So he came to Oldsmobile and they built a two-door roadster, basically a roofless car, 
um, and it had the Oldsmobile V8 in it. That was the engine of choice. And it put out 320 horsepower. They had an upgraded one for 350. And they actually built a supercharged, they built 11 supercharged versions of it with 540 horsepower, which kind of amazes me that they got that much power out of uh, that. Now, they all came in basically silver with different colored stripes on them. Now, since people have changed the colors of them, you can buy different colors. But they all came with silver. You know, they were all silver with various stripes. They all, it was a bit of a parts bin car from General Motors. So it had the Oldsmobile Aurora V8 in it. It had the ZF manual transaxle from a C5 Corvette was put into it. Shelby built his own chassis. And it was uh, an aluminum chassis with a carbon fiber body. Now, this is back in 99. Pretty high tech for the day. Um, the, the contents of the car. And um, the uh, Series 1 had dual wishbone suspension with coilover remote reservoirs on levers. So these weren't shocks that were attached to the control arms and then moved up and down. They worked through some levers and stuff, which, again, was pretty high-tech suspension for its day. Um, the uh, transmission was specifically modified for Shelby, uh, and the chassis was made from extruded 6061 aluminum. Uh, it came with the creature uh, comforts you expect of a performance luxury car, power steering, four-wheel disc brakes, factory air conditioning, power windows, uh, AM, FM, CD, audio system. Goodyear made tires specifically for this car that were actually based on IMSA racing rain tires that they used. And they were all uh, manual transmission cars. Uh, performance figures for this, uh, 0 to 60 times in about 4.5 seconds. Quarter mile times in about 12.8 seconds. Uh, top speed of about 170 miles an hour. The car weighed about 2,600 pounds. Uh, and again, the Series 1 was the only car designed, engineered, and built by Carroll Shelby from the ground up. But again, using parts bin pieces from General Motors as far as engine, air conditioning systems, and such. Hmm. Pretty rare car to see. I actually had a, a, a chance to take one of these to a cruise in one time. Uh, George de Montrand had one and at the time it was still running and they were kind enough to loan it to me and I took it on a Galveston cruise. We drove all the way down to Galveston and you know it drew a crowd because people rarely saw that car on the street. But um, you know pretty fun little car but again that has retained its value, the Shelby value that uh, the Chryslers haven't yet. All right. So, and that's kind of my, my story of Sh Shelby. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Top 10 Stories of 2023 is composed by Auto News. <clears throat> Number 10, Hyundai Amazon deal. Hyundai's partnership with Amazon to sell new vehicles through its website was a major development of the evolution of auto retail. Uh, whether the deal represents progress or a problem for dealers, if it inspires other automakers to follow suit, remains to be seen. Uh, number nine, industry adopts Tesla EV charging standard. That was a big story mm -hmm. this year. That fell into the number nine slot. Number ten, Fain wins UAW presidency. Uh, campaigning as a reformer after the union's demanding corruption scandal, uh, Fain narrowly ousted incumbent Ray Curry in a runoff to win UAW's first ever direct election of leadership. A corrupt union? No, never heard of that. Number seven, Lithia is number one, uh, topped Auto Nation to become the largest dealership group based in the U.S. on this year's automotive news list. That's a big jump. Number six, the inventory rebound with the microchip shortage that began in 2021 yeah. easing significantly. Inventory bounced back to a nearly three-year high. U.S. vehicle sales surged 14% in the first nine months of this year. Number five, uh, UAW ripple effect. Uh, workers of the Detroit 3 ratified their new contracts. Toyota, Honda, Volkswagen, Hyundai, Tesla, and other non-union automakers quickly gave their own manufacturing employees sizable raises. Number four. The cruise crisis. Cruises permits to operate autonomous vehicles were suspended in California after a pedestrian was injured in San Francisco. The GM subsidiary was forced to dramatically backtrack on its ambitious expansion plans and CEO Kyle Vaught resigned. That's ugly. Yeah. It's the wrong CEO. Uh, EV tax credits. 
Federal incentives encouraging localized sourcing for EVs had automakers scrambling to set up a compliant supply chain. Dealers feared chaos as the IRS set up a system to apply credits at the time of sale and for an entity of concern sourcing rules threatened to slash the number of vehicles eligible. Number two. EV pullback. Demands for EVs continue to decline, but at a slower pace than many automakers had expected. That prompted GM, Ford, and others to postpone or scale back investments in anticipation of a more gradual transition to an electric future. Wow. And uh, the number one story. The UAW strike. Union called for its first ever simultaneous strike against the Detroit Three, demanding record contracts amid the automakers' huge profits in recent years. But instead of calling everyone onto picket lines at once, the president, Fain, targeted only certain plants, threatening to escalate the work stoppages. Whenever negotiations got bogged down, he eventually shut down production at each of the company's most profitable plants before reaching deals that ended the strike after about six weeks at a cost of roughly $3 billion in lost production. Wow. We've got something very special for you as we close out uh, our show today. We invite you to stay tuned for that here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano ceramic window tint, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 in the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katy. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is now part of the iHeart family. Now you'll have access to 24-7 Car Talk anytime you need a fix. Just download the iHeart Radio app and ask for In Wheel Time Car Talk, and there we are. Be sure to save us in your iHeart library for instant access. No matter where you are, you have the best Car Talk Show right on your PC, laptop, or mobile device and never have to worry about finding us again. Of course, you can always get access to our video and audio streams via InWheelTime.com and your favorite podcast channel, and all of this is free to you. From the iHeartRadio app, you'll not only hear our Saturday morning live show, but the best shows of the past updated weekly. Never miss a minute of up-to-date new car reviews, pre-owned reviews, Conrad's Car Clinic, informative interviews, automotive news, and the most fun car talk show on the planet. Just download the iHeartRadio app, search for In Wheel Time Car Talk, save it to your library, and with a tap of the icon, you'll be in touch with your favorite car talk team. In Wheel Time Car Talk, streaming now on iHeart.com slash In Wheel Time Car Talk. Now a special Christmas goodbye from all of us here at In Wheel Time. Twas the night before Christmas, and out in the garage, there wasn't a trace of a Ford or a Dodge. The presents were wrapped, and the lights were all lit, so I figured I'd mess with the Chevy a bit. I popped the release, and I lifted the hood, when a deep voice from behind me said, Looks pretty good. Well, as you can imagine, I turned mighty quick, and there by the workbench stood good old St. Nick. We stood there a bit, not sure what to say. Then he spoke up. Want to trade for my sleigh? I said, no way, Santa, and started to grin. But if you've got the time, we could go for a spin. 
His little round mouth all tied up like a bow turned into a smile, and he said, All right, let's go. So as to not disturb all the neighbors' retreat, we pushed the Chevy on down to the street. Then, taking our places to coast down the hill, I started my baby. It was always a thrill. The sound that erupted took him by surprise, but he liked it a lot by the look in his eyes. With tires a-crying and headers a-glow, we headed on out where the hot rodders go. And Santa's grin widened, approaching his ears, with every shift up as I went through the gears. Then he yelled, I can't recall when I felt so alive. So I backed off the gas and said, You want to drive? Old Santa was stunned when I gave him the keys. When he walked past the headlights, he shook at the knees. The small block erupted with that American sound. When Santa stomped the gas, the tires shook the ground. Chirped into second and again into third. I just sat there holding on at a loss for words. Then I heard him exclaim as he blasted from sight, Merry Christmas to all! It's been one heck of a night. From Mike, Conrad, Jeff, and David, I'm Don Armstrong. Have a wonderful Christmas, and we'll see you for our New Year's show next Saturday, 8 to 11. So long for now. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.